Hey everybody, welcome to What the Flick. Uh, Grace and Jason from Pop Trigger are joining me. I'm Alonzo to talk about When We Rise. Are we the only gay people that work here? Are we? Are, I, we, like, openly gay, probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, I do think everyone's a little gay, gay yeah. so, you, well, I mean, really everyone's gay. They, they, who declared a major is what I'm saying. All right, so When We Rise, this is a this is kind of a big deal. This is a four-night miniseries uh, executive produced by Academy Award-winning screenwriter Dustin Lance Black. Uh, who is responsible for um, some movies I'm not crazy about. Uh, but I admire the ambition of getting this thing out there and of telling this story. It is through the mainly through the eyes of Cleve Jones, uh, who is an activist who um, was kind of, the, he's, I think of him as gay zealot. Like he was in all the right places at all the right time, or Forrest Gump or whatever. You know, he... Worked on the Harvey Milk campaign. He created the, uh, the 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 names project AIDS Quilt, um, and you know so through the prism of San Francisco in the 70s, we sort of see uh, the rise of. Uh, uh, just sort of queer visibility and of you know gays and lesbians trying to work together as a political faction. Uh, obviously, the devastating effects of AIDS. So from the first couple of nights. Um, I'm taking it that y'all are not super into well, this Well, I, I don't know how you feel, Jason, but what I will say about When We Rise, and that I had told you before we covered it, is that I am always a little hesitant when I see a big gay project that's really, it's gotten a lot of publicity, and I, you know, it just makes me hesitant because it's often treated very indelicately, mm. and it's very much like, gay, like it, gay, <laughs> support it, you're wrong if you don't. And as a gay person, like, yeah, uh, yeah, support it, gay, awesome, history, awesome, good. But I feel like this show, at least thus far, is doing too much to be meaningful and thoughtful in telling these stories. I agree. It's just really, some of the dialogue is just so ham-fisted, it's just so, so gay, <laughs> and, but but I but I understand like you want to tell these stories, you want to educate people, and that's what I think is important. Like the history of Cleve well, Jones is something I didn't know about before the show, but I wish that they'd made it that just that and stop with the fucking Rosie O'Donnell and the mullet. Like why do we need <laughs> yeah, that, those stories you're right. as well? Great, absolutely. You know, ABC and Disney are very audacious and ambitious with this because there's a lot of things that they're trying to cram into to a story. All these. It's like um, they're trying to intermingle all these stories to make it make sense to to the to the viewer, and sometimes a lot of things are being lost. Like, okay, so you have Cleve's story, who I, I I like, but I think Roma's story to me is more resonates more with me, is more compelling than Cleve's story. But also too, I, a lot of the characters in the in the show as well, I I didn't know about. Like, this is an education for me, and I grew up in the '80s and '90s when a lot of this was happening presently. So um, I think. Entertainment Weekly also said the exact same thing you said too about, you know, it, it's just, it's a lot going on, it's hard to follow, and they were also afraid that it wasn't gonna do the the message that they're, that they're trying to portray and convey justice, and I, and I agree with that 100%. I, I will say this, I mean, yes, I think you could, you'd have a more focused story if you were telling Cleve's story. I think you would also get a real backlash of like, oh great, another white guy story. Fair. And I think they really felt like if we can tell Cleve's story, Roma's story, and Ken's story, then that way we talk, the, the, you know, they're really going out of their way to be intersectional. I here. completely agree with you. Maybe and not always successfully, but at least they're doing it. I know? completely agree with you. I think that the way to tell the story has to be intersectional. That's what, that's how it happened. Yeah. Um, I think that what I would have liked to see and what I was hoping the show would have been is that one episode is Cleve's story, one episode is Ken's, one episode right. is Roma's, and yes. then they join, once we know and care about these characters and these stories and where they're coming from, then we can join them up, because the first episode I thought was so disjointed and confusing, I was telling them before we started, I'm not even sure whose names are who. <laughs> you wanted more development of characters, yeah, right? Focus on, let, let me care about Cleve, let me care about his story before jumping into Roma, like, well, take my flyers, baby lesbian, like, I, was, <laughs> I, I don't care about her, I wanna go back to Cleve, and then with Ken, we like jump past this amazing, I mean, this heartache that he's going right. through, we just Absolutely. don't care about it. And it's and you need, when you're telling queer stories, especially when you're trying to sort of give it the humanity to a heterosexual audience at ABC, 9 p.m., right after The Bachelor, I was there, <laughs> you need to give it the humanity, you need people to care, be like, care about these. These are right. human stories. Well, that, these are that, stories that, everyone can that read. That was the question that I wanted to bring up. Like, who is, the, audi who is the audience for this? Because I think, I mean, for a lot of gay people, I, I, certainly, I mean, I'm 
the oldest of the three of us. I think for you're only 21. Come oh, on. you're yeah. sweet. Come on. Come for, on. for people younger than me, I think a lot of this is news. Even Dave, my husband, at one point was sort of mocking it for like kind of like covering stuff that everybody should know. And then he was like, "Oh, wait, there was still like police harassment after Stonewall." I'm like. No, not well. Yes, Dave, there was. Not you know? everyone should, but you shouldn't say everyone should know because, okay, so you, your question was who is the target audience for this show? And I think that we, when we rise, ABC and Disney are trying to educate the masses with this because apparently it's on ABC right after The Bachelor for the whole, for like prime time. It's not yeah. like it's on an after school special like most sto or these stories would have been back in the 90s sure. or on HBO or on subscription television because mainstream audiences were not ready yeah. for... The HBO did the And the Band Played On right. movie in the in the 90s, right. but yeah, the network TV, that they're, that they're not even just sort of handling this material with tongs, but they are full on like, let's go to there the bathhouse and talk yeah, about that at 9.30. The you know, was it's like, okay, that's within pretty. Within the first 10 minutes. Yeah. There was a great sex But scene. is that, but yeah, with Rome. <laughs> Grace, I love you, but that, but that's authentic. And also, I, I think Grace, you said something about like just how they're just giving you everything up front about um, Cleve's dad being a psychologist and saying he needs to essentially fix him, fix him, and yeah. cure him of the gay. I, I think, which is relevant for the time, right? And, exactly, and, and specifically for Cleve is actually true. But Grace, you do also have a fantastic point. That's why I love Grace Balder. It's fucking <laughs> smart. I am uh, nailing it today. Uh, you are on point, Grace Balder. But develop, but develop. Development of all the characters because you're right. How can we, uh, when we watch these TV shows, be it Stray Gate, Stray Gear, whatever, we always want to connect and 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 feel like we are one with the character we're watching. That's why you have favorites in different shows. I feel watching um, when we when we rise. I'm like, okay. Ken's story. Mm -hmm. Ken was an interracial relationship, which resonates with me because I've been in an interracial relationship for and 10 years now. And that's an episode. Exactly. Why? Like, that's an episode. Right. Let's talk about exactly. that. Exactly. And then you have and then you have him on a boat. Charlie Carver, his his boyfriend is or his partner, I'm sorry, he's in is, the Navy. is in the Navy. And then he's is he, he's murdered. Did he die? No, he, he dies. Uh, he, in okay. Combat. That's but, what I got, but you, it, it was glazed over. Does he die in combat? Because well, I was under the impression, and this just sort of goes to show where this show is not clear. Mm. Uh, I thought that uh, he was being, that Ken was giving, not, am I getting these right? Ken, Ken was giving commands to his boyfriend and that there was a superior officer that was a little bit suspicious that was making him go faster than he should have and because of uh, Ken putting the pressure on his boyfriend in the line of battle mm -hmm. or whatever that there was a mix up and there was an explosion and Ken felt responsible. I think no. I would have loved to have seen that being dealt with if that's <laughs> right. true because I just had to surmise that and talk about it with my friends during the commercial break. What that's, the fuck I think happened? that's what happened. I, that's what I got too, Grace, but L let's talk about the positives of this show, though, because you I do think. <laughs> well, there, there's always positives, ladies oh. and gentlemen. Uh, I look, do think. I'm glad this thing exists. And, right. And, and, yes. and, and, and as much as we may find a lot of it hokey, this is news to a lot of people. Watching. Absolutely. They have never heard this stuff. They don't know about that, you know, uh, so many of the baby gays just assume that it's always been what it is exactly right now. It's always right drag now. race and this, and this Yeah, like, like, like Will and Grace has always been on television. Right. It's like, no, you exactly. know, that, there, was a, there was a long, hard fought battle for every little tiny step. So I'm glad this exists and I'm glad this stuff is being put out there. That said, uh, it's uh, Dustin Lance Black. I it just it frustrates me because he's he his heart is in the right place and he, he is doing he's 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 talking about the subjects that should be talked about. But the way he does it, uh, you know, he won an Oscar for Milk, and I think that is a terrible movie. Like I, you know, it, it is it is so sort of ham-fistedly like we talk about after school specials. You know, uh, give me the actual documentary, The Times of Harvey Milk. I, 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 anything. I feel like I should have a, a reading list that goes with this, this miniseries. Like, agree. go watch The Times of Harvey Milk. Go watch We Were Here. Go read uh, or see the movie and or both uh, uh, How to Survive a Plague. I mean, um, there's you know, th there's a lot of great documentaries about this subject matter, about this period of time, and about the battles that are being portrayed here. But, <laughs> uh, but in a less... You know. Also, oh, go ahead. Well, it reminds me, my frustrations with uh, this show thus far is it reminds me of This Is Us, what This Is Us is trying to do, where uh -huh. there all these storylines intersect, and they do so at least some episodes seamlessly. I've sort of fallen off the This Is Us bandwagon. Um, but I think that that's what this show was trying to do, and I understand why. Um, sort of like a love actually, but for gays, you know? <laughs> and uh, I, I just don't think that that's 
the right way to go about telling these stories. It's not. I think that, and that's what I was nervous about, is just finding a really meaningful and thoughtful way, an intentional way to tell each and every individual story because they deserve to be told and they deserve to have an impact on not just gay viewers like ourselves who are inclined to watch this anyway. I'm going to watch this whole thing. I'm going to watch it again, like the L word I've seen seven times. <laughs> I, I, all we, we, we are starved for content. Right. And I think the, the straight community as well, or those that are curious to learn more, um, they, they need this content as well, but they need to be told correctly. And I don't think that this was the best way to tell it. I would have loved to have episode, 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 and then finale, we all they all join together and we can or, we care about them as a whole. Or, the, 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 I agree with you too, Grace, or they could have episode, 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 and then at the end of each episode, give an update of the story and, and, and offer more um, context to what we're watching. But again, the positive about this is that this is on network television. It's not on subscription television. And also, I think that, you know, when you, when you have a show like this on a juggernaut as ABC, you also have to cater to what the heads, the heads above want. So their fear was probably, and I'm only speculating. I don't know what their fears are, but if I was, if I was a executive for ABC, I would think, okay, at the end of the day, ratings matter. So what's, how can we make this story? Um, digestible for people who are not of the LGBTIQ community? How can we make this more, more um, get the point across of, okay, this happened to these people, these are the issues, but still make it watchable that a 13-year-old will want to sit down and see this and not feel like, oh my God, what am I watching? Or having parents not allowing their children, the baby gays and the mm -hmm. up-and-coming baby gays to to experience this, you know? Because for, uh, again, I grew up and I, I watched and the, and, um, and the Band Played On. I watched, um, to, you know, um, if these walls could talk, which is not about well, the first like you guys had said earlier, there's there's yeah. two there's two movies. One is about abortion, the second one's about lesbianism, and um and th those are for me those were eye opening for me when I was younger back in the '90s because I grew up in the closet. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. There wasn't that many gay people out and about, you know, saying we're here, we're queer, get used to us. When I was growing up, so you so I dealt with a lot of things internally. So watching these shows was like, oh my god, it, it made me fearful. It did educate me, but it's still. Um, it instilled something in me, a little bit of fear about my future. And I think that we don't, going forward, our kids shouldn't, if you are, if they are gay, if they are, if they are possibly questioning, they shouldn't have fear about fear about their future, and they should be educated. I think that's why that's why they're doing it this way, mm -hmm. uh, spe speculating. And, and again, you know, it's, it's like uh, you, I, you're saying we are starved for this kind of content. And I think if you had, like, if Logo had delivered on its original promise of actually <laughs> doing stuff that wasn't just Drag Race, that actually hey hey hey, uh, uh, nothing <laughs> against Drag Race, but that's all they do, you know. Well, Drag Race like, is now on VH1. Hooray! Shame. I'm just saying. But if Logo had done more like <laughs> diverse programming and 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 programming that, that right. mattered in different sure. ways, you know, you wouldn't have to cram every. This is like I fif agree. 15 pounds of queer history sausage into a five pound casing, basically. I do agree you know. with that. I think that. This When We Rise is a result of years of an underserved population and Dustin Lance Black being like, ooh, I got greenlit, let's go! Yeah, we like, gotta tell it all! And, we gotta and tell, what know. I will say, I will say a positive about the show, even Please, though great to thus far I really <laughs> dislike it, but I again, I it's the, it's with all gay shows. I hate it, I'll watch it, and I'll <laughs> tell other people to watch it too. Um, I, I think that it does capture the resilient spirit of the queer community well. And I think that it makes that the forefront of its messaging, which is something that I think is so important for people that maybe had never met a gay person before. I was just in South Dakota, and I was the first for many people I met, and it wow. was very oh, fun. Oh, you popped their cherries. Good I for did. you. I did. And what I what I hope that I impart on people, and I, I know a lot of you know gay people sort of feel similarly when you when you when someone has never met a gay person before and they're very or they're unfamiliar with uh, the queer struggle or issues, is I just want them to know that we are a hopeful and accepting and resilient population, and I do think that. That, this, that spirit is captured in the show. I agree. Is the writing hokey and makes me cringe regularly? That is true, but it's it's in the right place. I, I, I find it engaging. I will say that. Like, I'm compelled to see where they're going to go next and what they're going to show me next. Um, you know, I think that, that it, it, there are little things that it's doing right in terms of... You know, when you see this sort of vintage footage of people like Jesse Helms or Anita Bryan or Ronald Reagan, and, you, you know, as as despicable and horrible as the stuff that the people on the right still say in public into a microphone, but, but that it was just that widespread and that much the sort of baseline of, oh, yes, we all believe this in society and that that was a thing that had to be fought against. I think that's really interesting, The uh, that it doesn't shy away from talking about how 
you know, uh, white gays didn't want to help black gays, and you know, gay men didn't want to help lesbians, yeah, and yeah. liberal straight people didn't want to help gay people. Like, they, you know, it, it, it is not a kumbaya moment. Like, every coalition is hard fought and has to, you know, involves overcoming prejudices and getting past, you know, presumptions and that kind of thing. Uh, and I also, in, in last night's episode, where we see the white night riots after the, the, the Dan White uh, verdict, they actually do, I think, a really good job of explaining how uh, this is why sometimes you have to fight against the police, you know, and people always, you get somebody out there who are like, ah, blue lives matter, and you know, and, and it's very easy to say, like, yes, I support the cops when you are a straight, white, Christian male who mm. the cops are generally there to protect. Right. But if you're in a community that is that is under attack by the cops, you know, yes, eventually you you work with City Hall and you go through channels and you create liaisons and you you build those relationships. But sometimes you have to fight back. Absolutely. And, and this movie, I think this, this miniseries is kind of demonstrating that there are times that that has to happen. And also, I think we'd be, okay, so we're just, we're, we're here today, we're saying that we don't like the hokiness of the show and we, we have, we have, um, reservations about some of the content, but wouldn't we be more pissed if they didn't give us the content that they're giving? What if they tried to make it, if they didn't show the realism and the reality of what happened, if they made yeah. it more more Disney-friendly and or, made it- I mean, look at what happened with the movie Stonewall. Ooh, yes, so good I think, example. <laughs> so I think that if that is uh, sort, sort of as bad as it can get, yeah. um, then this is a step, then this is absolutely a absolutely. move away from that. I, yes. wouldn't, I wouldn't compare them at all. I don't even, did you guys review Stonewall and I the would flick? probably, yeah. Because I don't even think that uh, that warranted a review. No, that, Whereas that, this show, like, because it, it's, it, it is making an effort and it's trying to tell stories that we have, that, that we should have been telling, that we're finally telling this year, uh, of course it merits a review and it merits critique as all, you know, is all I think works of art that are making an effort should, but yeah. I don't think that Stonewall tried, and I don't think that it captured what you were just talking about with regards to fighting the police and uh, and and just justification of uh, just fighting back. Whereas this is trying and and uh, part for, for and, and part of me part of me kind of feels like when this sort of thing comes around, even if it's not great or not perfect or not what we want, we kind of need to support it just Absolutely, so yeah. there'll yeah. be another one and then maybe somebody can get it right. more right that's, next time. That's, and, that's, I completely It's agree. the same thing with um, going back to the Oscars and, and um, Janelle Monae and Halle Berry talking about, you know, it's progress as far as having, you know, more diversity in film yeah. and in the industry. Absolutely right, you guys. Fine. It's not, it's not the perfection or it's not, you know, what we thought it would be, but at least it's there, and yeah. that and that stands for something. And it could get good. And I, it, it could. Yeah, I think we're only will. halfway through. I think you will. And I and I also feel the that wigs are going to get better as we get closer to 2006. <laughs> it's like Sex in the sure City. They, the makeup got exponentially better every season. But I will <laughs> say that I love the ensemble cast and the people who just keep coming out of the woodworks as characters yes. in this. It's fantastic. Carrie Preston, Whoopi Goldberg, Rosie O'Donnell, Michael DiLorenzo. Um, you have a lot, and more, Dennis O'Hare, more yes. people that are gonna be in this that are that are supporting this and really that are gay and, sh that are gay and straight right. and that are allies of the LGBT um, community. So I think that's a wonderful thing. It's, it's a win-win, you guys. We're, we're being nitpicky, but. But, uh, no, yeah, let, let, it, let it be clear. We're glad this thing exists and we hope it does well. Yeah. All right, uh, they're giving us the high sign, but we will be back to talk about the uh, other, the back half of this thing uh, next week, so please join us back.